we are now ready to approach studying the kingdom of God. Now, I want to say to you from the very beginning, the church and the kingdom are not the same thing. When we say church, it's not the same thing as saying the kingdom of God. When we say the kingdom of God, we're not talking about the church. These are two separate things in Scripture, but God's design for the church and His kingdom is that they work together. And you are part of that eternal plan that God is unfolding now in the ages. Let's take a look at the kingdom of God. The subject or concept of the kingdom of God is not just some kind of obscure doctrine hidden away in some corner of the Bible that is only to be discussed in a seminary or a Bible college. Instead, it's really the central focus of God's unfolding purpose. The kingdom of God is not some wishful pie in the sky someday we'll be in the kingdom and we'll hope for heaven to come someday. Just hold on till then. No, the kingdom of God is vital and powerful and in action today in our world. The kingdom of God, I've heard people say that the kingdom of God is just a means by which I demand what I want to get my privileges to riches or rulership or to live life on my terms. This is not the kingdom of God. And I want to remind you again, when we talk about the kingdom, we are not just saying the church in a different set of terms. The kingdom and the church are separate entities, but they are designed to function together. When we look at the kingdom of God, here's what we discover, five very significant things. We first of all see the nature and character of God Himself and of the universe and eternity that He created. Number two, it outlines God's sovereign plans for all of humanity from the present through all of eternity. Eternity in the past, eternity into the future. Third, His divine plan of redemption and salvation only through His Son, God the Son, Jesus Christ, becomes evidently clear in studying the kingdom of God. Fourth, the purpose, power, authority, and plan for the church and ministry, your ministry, your life, becomes much more clear as we look at the kingdom of God in this current church age. And number five, the basis upon which every Christ follower is to believe, live, and act, especially you as God's chosen leader. We are part of an eternal kingdom, and that should determine how we live, how we think, how we minister, what we do, and why we do it.